Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. Halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. <laughs> you liked it, so we spun it off, and we're at number 52. And mm -hmm. how do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at Motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out with Zach and I holding coffees. It's only up for a short time. Once we gather all of our questions, the post is deleted, and we start the show. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Love your show. Do you think the battery replacement issue with Hyundai Kia products could also potentially impact their hybrid cars in case they get into an accident or hit road debris like those two EV-related incidents? Well, the um, uh, hybrids and plug-in hybrid battery packs are inside the cabin. So the first part of your question is, if it's in an accident, yes. Yeah. Depends on if uh, the area where the battery is impacted, that could be an issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, road debris and driving over something, no. It's inside yeah. the cabin of the car, and it's much better protected. And that's the beauty of hybrids and plug-in hybrids, is that the battery is inside the vehicle. It's a smaller battery. In the case of the Ionic 5, it has a 70. 7.4 kilowatt hour battery. The Tucson is under 20 kilowatt hour and then something like a hybrid is under two kilowatt hour. So they are a lot smaller uh, size uh, to worry about the costs associated uh, that you would see in a pure EV. Thank you for your videos, research, and hard work on these topics. Thank you. Will manufacturers shift production output to Canada now that the U.S. hybrid EV sales have decreased? Or is the leasing tax credit loopholes and price cuts stopping this? Currently on a one-year wait list for the 2024 Kia Sportage PHEV in Nova Scotia. Okay, so what you have in the United States is a slowdown of uh, expected demand. Mm -hmm. EV sales are actually up. Okay, so think about that for a second. The problem is some of these brands had lofty targets yeah. for where they would be with EVs. They're not there, they're lower than they thought, but they're still growing. EV sales are still growing. So uh, some brands have overproduced, mm -hmm. like um, the F-150 Lightning. We've heard lots of stories about they're sitting on lots. Yeah. I, I was watching YouTube this morning. I love that YouTube, by the way. I use it all the time. <laughs> Every single time an ad popped up, yeah. it was for the Ford uh, Mach-E and really? how great the Mach-E is. Wow. And I was thinking, well, I guess they're trying to move that iron. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would think that they will send them where there is demand. Yeah. You can't just send an American car to Canada. It has to be sent as a Canadian car. So they'll have to figure that out before they actually produce the vehicle. You have to remember, U.S. trims are different than Canadian trims. They're not typically the same. Uh, Canada has a checklist of what they want for their vehicles, and the U.S. has a checklist. And sometimes they're similar, and sometimes not so much. Uh, we also see Mercedes-Benz with their EQE models, that there's uh, more vehicles on lots. That's what we're hearing from our viewers. So... Um, I don't know. I don't think initially we're going to see an improvement in inventory in Canada okay. versus the U.S. So what's going to happen is at the Korean level, they're going to say, we're going to ship this many to USA yeah. and we can ship more to Canada if the demand is there. But they'll have to be made as a Canadian or U.S. model. We'll see. Do you think that the prices of pickup trucks full size will stay as high as they are now or will they drop soon? Keep up the good work, guys. Thank well, you. Well, this is one of the most competitive, seg actually, it is the most competitive segment of the auto industry. Yeah. And what you see, and um, other ads I've seen on YouTube for Ram, yeah. like Stellantis is really uh, aggressive with uh, incentives mm -hmm. and pricing when they need to move iron. So that's one area where you want to wait for an incentive. Mm -hmm. I, I think it just depends on the popularity of the pickup truck, you know, is Toyota going to reduce the price of the Tacoma or have more incentives or the or the Tundra? Uh, I would say no with the Tacoma. It's just such a popular pickup truck. The most aggressive reduce, reduction, I should say, in interest rates, because mm -hmm. that's a big cost of owning the cars, borrowing the money. Mm -hmm. We've seen the most aggressive interest rate reductions on full-size pickups. So you want to get the trifecta. You want to get like the 2% interest rate winning. You want to get, ooh, it's $5,000 off, winning. Yeah. And then also hit the dealer and say, come on, Fred, give me some money off. That's Give the us a deal. Give us a deal. Or Is... Larry. Could be Fred or Larry. <laughs> Could be Susan. Could be Harry. Could be Andrea. <laughs> Could be anybody, really. 
Is the Civic Type R the better buy long term over the Integra Type S, even if used as a daily driver, accumulating commuter mileage and occasional winter salt? Oh yeah, totally. I totally think the Civic Type R is a better long term hold. I don't know. I I just. I love the Integra. That Type S was so special and the manual transmission and everything about it. I love it. You get all of that in in the uh, Honda. But the I, Honda has got more curb cachet because it's it's a it's a been around for longer. The Integra they they cobbled that together because Listen, I have such great memories of the Integra. Those memories stick with me okay. since I was a child. I would get the Integra myself, Zach would get. Wait, I am Camp Civic, Andrea's Camp Integra. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Are cars made and sold for the Canadian market have better components and better rust proofing than cars made for the US market? A couple people told me this. Also, if a used car was originally from Canada, are parts different for this car than the same car for the US market? Okay, so where you get some differences, it's got nothing to do with like there's, they don't go, oh, here's a car for a hoser. We're going to put an extra rust protection. They don't do that when they make them and ship them off. Uh, and they go, this one's for Alabama. We're not going to put any rust protection. And that's not the way it works. No. They're made the same way. What you're talking about and what you might have heard is in Canada, you might get certain things like a larger windshield washer reservoir. Sure. Because you're driving in the slush and yeah. the muck and you got to clean your windows all the time. So Canadian cars might have that. They might have a block heater um, that you can install. There's certain components that they might change, but it's very minimal. Yeah, and the whole rust proofing, no, the, the vehicles are the same in that regard, so you don't have to worry about that. Love watching your videos, thank you. I'm about to get a 2024 Ionic 5 next month after a two year wait, but the recent battery issues are making me nervous. Do you think I should proceed with buying the car? Would you suggest any alternatives in the same price range? I don't mind a one to two year wait, but the car I love like and want is the RAV4 Prime has three to five year wait. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, for me, obviously, what worries me about the Ionic 5 is possibly the design. Um, I don't know for sure because we asked Hyundai questions specifically about this. Um, I'm worried about the battery protection cover underneath the Ionic 5, how low it sits to the ground Does with 6.1 inches of ground clearance. Well, you know what? They market it as an SUV. To me, it looks like a car. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things I'm concerned about, and with the Ionic 5 is the design, the battery protection plate, and then of course, battery replacement costs is, are, are very high. We can all agree on that. Does this affect other electric vehicles? Well, First off, we don't know what the battery costs of any electric vehicle is. We hear that the the uh, Model Y or Tesla models are about $25,000. I, I haven't gotten that confirmed from Tesla, but that's what people are telling us. What does the Subaru Solterra battery cost to replace? We don't know these things. What we do know is the Solterra offers 8.3 inches of ground clearance. That extra ground clearance when running over road debris may help. It's got a marvelous cabin. It's got loads of room on the inside. It handles well, it accelerates amazingly. All of that is true. We like Hyundai products. They make good cars. Yeah. This is an issue they're gonna have to deal with. So you might wanna consider whether you wanna get that or get something else. To Andrea's point, I think raising um, the car up or brands that offer that might be the way to go. Or as we found out from Volkswagen, can you repair the battery? I think that's helpful with bringing costs down, but the other issue is, can you get the parts to repair the batteries? Who do they have available? Do they have trained EV technicians? Whether you're gonna find all this out at the dealership level, it doesn't hurt to ask the question. Maybe the salesperson could ask their service department what's involved in all of that. Come on, you know, like I the mean, dealers I, are gonna, they want a sale. They're I gonna know, say, oh, it'll, like... be, it'll be fine. Here's what I predict. It's not gonna help you if you've got a car coming like right away. No. But I think because of all of this and the negative sentiment around this particular model, they're gonna have to redesign the lower uh, tray, yeah. the cover, and they can't go with this quite flimsy cover they're going to have to go to what Tesla's done and do like a, a really light 
but strong titanium cover, which yeah. is more expensive. So that's going to have to be baked into the cost of the car yeah. as well. I think that's what they're going to have to do to get around this. Yeah, uh, there was actually a third person who came forward as well. Same issue with the Ionic 5, ran over something. And her response to people was, you know, Ionic 5 owners, be careful. It doesn't mean that you're going to drive over something. You can own an Ionic 5 and have absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. But I think that you have to be aware of some of the challenges that you could have. Love your reviews. The Hyundai Ionic 5 stories are a revelation. A big thank you for bringing them out with the best in-depth analysis. Thank you. I'm looking to replace my CX-5 and I'm looking to buy a hybrid to begin with. What should be the options one must consider while picking up a hybrid? Oh, well, there's lots of uh, choices out there in the, the same sort of class. You're going to look at products like the good old RAV4 hybrid yeah. is kind of like the gold standard. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the new CRV hybrid, which drives beautifully. Mm -hmm. You could get a Ford Escape hybrid. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more hybrids. Um, Mazda is saying they're going to have a hybrid um, CX-50. Sometime this year. So if you're not in a rush, you Next could... Next year, 2024. Yeah, 2024. Mm -hmm. Well, it's this year. It's now. Is it after the new year when we recorded this? I don't know, okay. but right now as we're talking, it's still 2023. So okay. 2024. So that's right. So this, yeah. this year, 2024, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, is going to be uh, a hybrid. So you could go brand to brand. You could go Mazda to Mazda. Yeah. Stick with what you like. It's going to be a base from what we understand on the Toyota system anyway. Now, I think uh, two of the best hybrids for quietness out there go to the Hyundai Tucson hybrid and the Kia Sportage hybrid. Both are incredible incredibly quiet and refined. So lots to choose from out there and uh, I'm sure more will be coming. That new Santa Fe is in a hybrid as well. It depends, you know, how big of a vehicle you need. Love the channel and never miss an episode. Thank you. What mainstream vehicles would you recommend for older people who need easy to use infotainment systems and hard buttons and knobs. You know who does that very well? Jenner Motors. Yeah. They do their infotainments. I, I always, this is the line I always use. They're easy to use if from 18 to 80. Big icons, easy to interact with. Those yeah. are good. So, um, <laughs> even but, RAV4. Yeah, RAV4 yeah. has got big, Toyota. easy to use buttons. Back to Hyundai, though, uh, they still do, along with Kia, uh, real switches and buttons, and their systems are quite easy to use mm -hmm. as well. Uh, domestic brands do a really good job with this kind of stuff. I would agree. How about getting a Kia Soul EX trim with a good set of winter Toyo tires in Ontario? Your thoughts in comparison to kicks or similar categories looking for a high driver seating compared to a sedan car? Well, you're making a good choice with the Toyo winter tires. I have them <laughs> on my Cayenne we and like I'm very Toyo. happy with them. We've ordered some new Toyo winter tires for yeah. our upcoming GTI, so they'll be going on. Uh, so yeah, I think that uh, you're absolutely right that just the winter tires and you've, you've got traction and stability control in every modern car today. Mm -hmm. And if you drive using the gray matter, you'll be just fine. I think so too. Uh, it's a front wheel drive model, but we've always said with a good set of winter tires, uh, we do believe that you will be just fine. We have all wheel drive models. We have a front wheel drive. We have another front wheel drive coming here in Vancouver. I understand we don't get as much snow as you do in Ontario, but I would still feel pretty comfortable uh, with a front wheel drive model. Yeah, when I grew up, Andrea, there was all it was all two wheel drive. I know. You had the American cars that were still rear wheel drive, some of them, and then the new imports came, the 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 uh, Accord and the Civic and those sorts of things. And yeah. uh, we drove in those, no problem. No problem. Love your channel, content, and the icing on the cake is the humor. Thank you. I would like your recommendation on a compact, medium sized PHEV SUV. RAV4 Prime isn't available for at least two years. Would you suggest the Outlander, but my only issue is the CBT engine? Tucson is a good option, but having driven Hyundai Elantra before, I'm not sure if they have improved in terms of reliability and safety. Any one or two SUVs you would suggest I can test drive and make up my mind? Well, a couple of things. Um, the RAV4 Prime also has a CVT, mm -hmm. and uh, these are compact utilities, but let's not get the facts in the way of a good story, Andrea. Uh, this is uh, very com competitive, and you've got some big hitters on the list, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't see why you would shy away from the Mitsubishi. I think it's a, a really good product. They did a good job, and uh, when you put it in that sport mode, 
yeah. it goes. It's fun. It's got some good range, too. I mean, almost on par with the RAV4 Prime. Uh, I think that if you are going for Mitsubishi, make sure you have a dealership nearby. Um, some um, are not around. I think it's important to have a dealership in your area. We like the Outlander plug-in hybrid a lot. Any of our viewers who own one rave about it. I would also look at the Tucson plug-in hybrid. My mom has one. She's never had any issues with it at all. She absolutely loves it. She stays mostly within that electric vehicle range daily, so she hardly buys any gas. And that, and sorry, just to jump in, that yeah. does have a six-speed automatic. It does. And, and, all, and the cousin, the Kia Yeah, well. Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid, also the same with similar range. So um, those are two excellent options. Yeah, I think that's a good move. And I think we're going to see a lot more people uh, opening up to the idea of a plug-in hybrid yeah. because it gives you... It gives you the freedom from the gas pumps for most of your driving. Mm -hmm. It also gives you freedom of range if you have to jump on the highway and head out for a long road trip and not worry about it. Yeah. And it gives you, um, in some situations, access to uh, electrification at a lower price than a full EV. And also, you don't need to put in a level two charger if you have a plug-in hybrid. You can just go with a level one charger, which is exactly what my mom did. So there was no extra cost for that. She parks it in her garage. The charger is right there for her. And um, she's been super happy with her Tucson plug-in hybrid. And one of the reasons why she went with a plug-in hybrid is specifically when they go on road trips she doesn't want to have to stop and charge the vehicle which you have to do with a pure ev it solves a lot of problems for a lot of people we're we're big fans of hybrids we're big fans of plug-in hybrids yeah um full evs are great for certain people not great for others and i really think with all the zev mandates that are out there i really think that hybrids should be added to that list they will be um, they're gonna I have think, to be i think it's really important it's an affordable option for many people who can start saving at the pumps and lowering their emissions when they drive their vehicle i think hybrids are important andrea i've got a question for questions coffee and cars oh. How do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. I put a post out every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Is it 2024 yet? N I don't know. <laughs> it's not today, 2024. Yeah, but when does this drop? When yeah. is this? Yeah, I think it will be 2024. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year.